Hey folks, uh, back in the late 80s, I remember I was seeking out a different style of music. I was tired of progressive rock, of jazz, fusion, you know, very complex music. And I was really just, I just really wanted to go back to basic simplicity. Um, and um, I remember I was in a music store and I ran across this album right here. Lou Reed's New York. And I said, hey, that's perfect. Lou Reed, you know. Um, I like Lou Reed. I didn't know a whole lot about him. I didn't have many of his albums or anything. But So I bought the album, fell in love with it. It's just magnificent album. Love it to this day. And what it did was it uh, prompted me to seek out a lot more Lou Reed at the time, including going all the way back to the early Lou Reed of Velvet Underground. You know, I was aware of Velvet Underground, but I didn't uh, know what they sounded like that much. Never owned their albums back in the day. So I bought uh, the Velvet Underground and Nico, the debut album. And man, it was perfect. It was exactly what I was looking for at that time. It brought back all of these influences. You've got folk rock on there. You've got some balladry. You've got rock and roll. You've got some Bo Diddley type of stuff. You've got art music, you've got, um, you know, contemporary, cl uh, modern, classical. Uh, you have all of this stuff put together in a very, very simple way with a lot of creative ingenuity uh, on the part of Lou Reed and John Cale and the others. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous album. And... Uh, you know, over the years, I've uh, gone through several different Lou Reed phases and all. I'll go in and out, in and out. And, and uh, I was just listening to this album again in the last few months and just, just marveling at what I run out. You know, this album was recorded in 1966. It was released in 67. But when this album was recorded, we're, we're talking about, you know, Rubber Soul, uh, Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde, Pet Sounds, and this. You talk about a totally unique, different album. So I'm going to go over some of the, the information. You could talk forever about this album, about Lou Reed, but I'm just going to talk about the music primarily. And um, it's amazing. This was number 13 on Rolling Stone's uh, greatest albums of all time. So it's ranked pretty high there. Um, it uh, involves, of course, Lou Reed, um, the late Lou Reed, uh, John Cale, the Welshman, uh, Sterling Morrison, the late Sterling Morrison, uh, Mar Maureen Tucker, and of course the German singer Nico, which ha she is also late. Uh, many of you who know anything about Velvet Underground know that they were part of Andy Warhol's, you know, Exploding Plastic Inevitable, and uh, they're, they're performing uh, ev um, multimedia event series that they put out and that they did. And um, the album was produced, it says it's produced by Andy Warhol, but if you read into it a little, uh, the, the players basically say that it was produced by Tom Wilson. Now, Tom Wilson was a producer of many people, including, you know, Bob uh, Dylan. Okay. All right. Uh, it's incredibly unique percussion on here. We don't have, I don't, do they even have a drum set at all here? I don't know, but they, they, they use bass drums and, um, you know, just really basic percussion. We're not talking about typical rock and roll drumming here. Um, very lo-fi production, which I just love. I think it fits the music perfectly. I've never had a problem with lo-fi sound on my uh, favorite albums. Uh, the guitars are tuned down to semitone to give them a darker, warmer sound and uh, to match well with uh, John Cale's uh, electric viola. And, uh, of course, Lou Reed also had his uh, ostrich guitar tuning where all the strings are tuned in one note to give it a very unique sound as well. He used that, that type of tuning on some of the songs. All right, so let's just go through the songs. Um, I, You know, again, you could speak for a long time about Warhol and Lou Reed and John Cale and all these, Sterling Morrison, you could, and Nico. There's so much history behind all of this, but I'm just going to talk about the music, like I say. Uh, Sunday Morning, a song about paranoia. Okay, simple, childlike, folk pop ballad. Very pleasant and rather a rather odd opener, but it's perfect for the album, really. When you get to know the album, you realize it's really perfect for the album. 
We've got John uh, Kale playing uh, a glockenspiel type of uh, sounding uh, instrument called the Celesta, which is a keyboard, which when plays, it's, it sounds a little bit like a glockenspiel or a xylophone or something, you know. Really interesting. Uh, perfect for the song. You have this distant percussion, viola, uh, nice clean guitar solo, piano. Uh, some of the lyrics are, um, let's see here. Watch out, the world's behind you. There's always someone around you who will call. There's nothing at all. Very, very mild, almost in overly simplistic feeling, but if you listen to it, it's just perfect. It's really great. There's nothing like this album out there. And just remember, this was recorded in 1966, way ahead of its time. And the next song is uh, I'm wake Waiting for the Man. Or I'm waiting for my man. Uh, it was a song about uh, trying to obtain heroin in uh, Harlem, in New York City. Um, it's uh, number 159 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs, believe it or not. You have this insistent driving piano rhythm. On every eighth note. With repeating clean electric guitar arpeggiated riffing. The piano becomes discordant. In the final 30 seconds as they fade out. I'm waiting for my man. $26 in my hand. Up to Lexington, 125, 125th Street. Feel sick and dirty, more dead than alive. I'm waiting for my man. A song about, of course, uh, obtaining heroin. A lot of these songs are about drugs, um, sadomasochism, <laughs> bondage, uh, you know, prostitution, degradation. And there's some nice tracks as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. The next song is called Femme Fatale. Uh, it was written uh, at Andy Warhol's uh, request, I believe. Uh, written about Edie Sedgwick. Edie Sedgwick, of course, was the famous uh, Warhol um, superstar, they called her. Okay. Uh, sung by Nico, the German singer. It's a rather subdued, very lo-fi, almost Brazilian bossa type feel. It has an almost Brazilian feel with the chords. I think there's some major seventh chords in there to give it that feel. Her singing here reminds me a lot of Astrud Gilberto. Astrud Gilberto. <laughs> you know, the Brazilian singer. Uh, tall and tall and young and lovely. Really nice uh, singing style. She's a femme fatale with a one-eighth note of pulse again ding, 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 ding. the guitars are slightly out of tune as well which is sort of like in in fitting with that Jobim uh, Brazilian feel a little bit little boy she's from the street before you start you're already beat she's going to play you for a fool yes it's true because everybody knows she's a femme fatale good song all right the next song is an absolutely legendary classic definitely Venus in Furs, marvelous, uh, C-sharp minor. I love that, well, it starts off, you know, immediately with, with John Cale with his screeching electric uh, viola. And the, the note he's playing there is a G-sharp or a flat, whatever you want to call it. Has a nice droning express. It's almost like bagpipes or something, you know. It's just really wonderful. Uh, it's got a bass drums, a bass drum being played and tambourine. Uh, very simple electric guitar is the ostrich guitar I was telling you about and, and the standard guitar as well, a tuned down a half step. Uh, on the chorus, we have out of sync tuning with each other. The, the chords are a little bit out of tune. Again, you may say, well, that was just, you know, sloppy. Well, I think it really contributes to the feel of the song, the feel of the album. This song is either pure sonic ecstasy for some people or pure torture for other people. I, I'm in the former. I think it's absolutely marvelous. Marvelous song. Uh, it's reminiscent of some of the English Irish ballad droning uh, a la Pentangle, the band Pentangle or Steel Ice Band, but with a much darker edge. You're talking here like uh, something like the Chieftains in Hell, you know. <laughs> really amazing. I love the rapidly strummed guitars at the end. And I'm glad that it ends rather than fades out. Um, 
The song is uh, talking about the protagonist Severin, 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 uh, which is um, in, in an Australian novella written in 1870. I don't know who wrote the novella, but it was about bondage in S&M. Okay. I am tired, I am weary, I could sleep for a thousand years, a thousand dreams that would awake me, different colors made of tears. Really, really marvelous song. Classic. Then we get Run, 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 which is a series of, of you know, images or scenes involving uh, druggies, various druggies on uh, New York City streets. It's a classic rock song a la Bo Diddley kind of feel to it. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. boom, boom. That kind of feel to it. Run, 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 run. Take a drag or two. Don't, don't like that. Okay? Has a nice 60s garage band sound. Sort of like the Seeds or some of those garage bands from the 60s. Um, the droning sound with the great psychedelic, I think it's 12 string. I don't know, but it sounds like a 12 string guitar a la, you know, like the Birds. You know, or Robbie Krieger, maybe, you know, of the doors has that kind of out there playing style, very psychedelic. Run, run, run. Teenage Mary said to Uncle Dave, I sold my soul, must be saved. Going to take a walk down to Union Square, you never know who you're going to find there. You got to run, 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 take a drag or two. Run, 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 gypsy death, and you tell you what you do. Good song. Good stuff. Really a lot of fun. Bum, 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 bum. Then we get All Tomorrow's Parties about um, uh, one of the Warhol uh, parties where all the, you know, the attendees are walking around and saying different things and this and that. This is fantastic. That rhythmic piano. John Cale did so much. He brought so much to this album. It's just a marvelous what he brought, you know, with his viola, his, his piano, and other things. It's got this nice repeating, pounding bass. Uh, the bass drum pounding, 12-string guitar, a la the birds again. Once again, the ostrich guitar is here. Nice abrupt ending, just like I like it. Nico's vocals are very simple. It's a folk pop ballad, but it has that that dark, that edge to it with that pounding, that, that droning. Oh, it's amazing. And what costume wear shall the poor girl wear to all tomorrow's parties? For Thursday's child is Sunday's clown, for whom none will go mourning. The next song is also a definite Lou Reed classic. It's a uh, heroine, self-explanatory. All right. Uh, it's down to uh, D flat. I'm sure he's playing it as a D because it sounds like a D with the open strings with the G, D, and G, and D, and G. It's just basically D and G tuned down to a D flat, G flat. And the viola is playing the harmonics, play harmonics with the viola, um, the A flat note, just screeching harmonics. No bass guitar, just the guitar and the viola. Very, very simple percussion, ultra simple percussion. The percussion is uh, frequently out of tempo, which which le leads to that instability associated with the topic. You know, when they do the crescendo and then slow back down, and it's just really marvelous. The final two minutes of the song has a lot of dissonance with the uh, viola, just just really ripping in. The, I love it. I love that kind of stuff. It ends abruptly as, as well. I, I'm so glad he doesn't fade out on a lot of these great songs. Because when the smack begins to flow and I don't really care anymore. And when that heroin is in my blood and that blood is in my head. And thank God that I'm as good as dead. And thank your God that I'm not aware. And thank God that I just don't care. I guess I just don't know. And I guess I just don't know. Talk about being under the influence of heroin. He just doesn't care. Thank God I'm not aware. I just don't know. All right. Not a very pleasant song, but it's really powerful. The next song, There She Goes Again, about an abusive relationship. Speaking of not being very pleasant lyrics, these are pretty rough to listen to. Uh, it's a simple folk rock ballad, but the, it's, it is soulful. But, it, but it's just powerful lyrically. 
Um, the opening and, and uh, the, the rep repetitive uh, riffing in the song, of course, is from the old Hitchhike song from Marvin Gaye and done by uh, Rolling Stones and Alice Cooper band way back in the day. And many other people it has a chin, 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 you know, that kind of uh, opening. And, and if it's if hitchhiking, it fits the topic kind of a little bit. There she goes again. You know, she's out on the street again, you know. Uh, I like the instrumental rhythm guitar break and the up-tempo ending as well. Now take a look. There's no tears in her eyes. Like a bird, you know she would fly. What can you do? You see her walking on down the street. Look at all her, your friends that she's going to meet. You better hit her. Ooh. All right. I'll Be Your Mirror. Nice song written for Nico and sung by Nico. A short and sweet folky ballad with guitar, tambourine, bass. Very pretty. Very, it's one of the most upbeat and pleasant songs on the album. I like the vocal harmonies at the end as well. I'll be your mirror. You know, reflect what you are in case you don't know. I'll be the wind, the rain, and the sunset. The light on your door to show that you're home. It's a very nice upbeat song. Then we get another butt-kicking song a short a short song but it's uh, the black angels death song Woof. it's not meant and the words i think lou reed was obviously I, I know he was i know he was very influenced by bob dylan some of his lyric writing you can see it on this album already and on this particular track he wrote lyrics that uh were basically stream of consciousness type things they didn't mean anything he didn't intend on the meaning anything they just sounded good together uh, here, I just, I'll just give you the first two stanzas here. You can pick any of them. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, the myriad choices of his fate set themselves out upon a plate for him to choose. What had he to lose? Not a ghost-bloodied country all covered with sleep where the black angel did weep. Not an old city street in the east gone to choose. Sounds good. Doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot, but whatever. Screeching, once again, screeching viola over simple electric guitar arpeggiated chords. Added sound effects in places. Really, really nice. Very short, though. Then we get to the longest track on the album, I believe. I believe this is the longest track. It's seven, almost eight minutes. Uh, European Sun. Uh, this is very typical of the time. The psychedelic kind of jamming, kind of dissonant noise, white noise type of thing that was popular at the time. This song apparently was dedicated to the poet Delmore Schwartz, um, who was um, very influential um, with Lou Reed when Lou Reed attended um, uh, Syracuse University back in the day. It's got a nice rocking bass riff with a, a very simple two chord uh, gu guitar strumming and that strumming is persistent throughout and I love that. I love how the strumming is persistent even though the song starts going off the rails but the strumming is, continues there. The second guitar comes in with almost almost Captain Beefheart style of psychedelic crazy avant-garde jamming rhythmic jamming uh we have a loud crash where i think john kale smashed some uh, plates or something uh, we get feedback we get distortion it intensifies along with out there bass improvisational it just goes on and on and on just it's really great i really like it it's at the end of the, the album which is where it should have been for the song uh some of the lyrics and there are very few lyrics on the uh, on this song but some of them are you killed your european son you spit on those under 21 but now your blue cars are gone you better say so long hey 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 bye 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 folks this is a marvelous album now um it's not for everybody and it's not for even fans on any given day i mean you know you have to kind of be in the mood for it because it's quite unique quite quite unique and, of course, Velvet Underground put out these four studio albums. And they're all in this box set, by the way. This is a great box set. This contains all four of the studio albums, plus a lot of outtakes and extra tracks and everything. And, uh, you know, and, of course, Lou Reed put out his uh, great big black box set here. Let's see if I can get it out with t without tearing down everything. Urgh, it's heavy. You know, he put out this great big box set, the RCA and Arista album collection. There you go. Can you see that? Marvelous sound on here. He was in, involved in the, making sure the sound was really great. And then also you have this here, box set. Lou Reed, The Sire Years, complete albums box set, which is great. This contains, you know, like uh, 
New York and Magic and Loss and a lot of those uh, albums. So Lou Reed has quite a long discography, starting with the Velvet Underground there. And uh, I'm going to go through the, tra the the albums as time goes on because I do think they're they're unique, they're different, and uh, something about Lou Reed is very special. Um, you know, very special simplicity, but at the same time, there's a lot there. It, re it rewards repeating repeated listenings quite a bit. All right. That's enough of, out of me about this album. Uh, you know how great it is. If you're watching this, you probably already know that. And um, uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye, folks.